Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Fung. Today I'm going to be talking about fasting, specifically for women. How to time it with the menstrual cycle, and what sort of things you should watch out for in the menopausal and premenopausal area, as well as some fascinating research from the biometrics company Lumen, which talks about the types of energy you're using through the cycle. note before we begin this video is sponsored by lumen this allows us to give this 10 percent uh, discount coupon code so please enjoy there are some specific changes that go on with the hormones in the female body and usually the menstrual cycle is counted from day one being the first day of bleeding during that time from uh, menstruation through to ovulation, you get a slow buildup of the hormone estrogen. And estrogen is to prepare the uterus for uh, the implantation of the egg. Ovulation happens roughly around day 14, and that's when the egg is released from the ovary when it makes its way into the uh, uterus. After ovulation, the estrogen starts to fall, and the progesterone level starts to go up. So these two phases of the cycle are broken up by ovulation, and that can be measured sometimes by temperature, sometimes people feel it. The first half of the cycle is called the follicular phase, and the second half is the luteal phase. The question is when the best time to fast and what the best foods to eat are uh, during those periods of time. Estrogen is interesting because it tends to have certain effects on the body. It goes up during puberty and it focuses the female body on putting fat into the hips and the breasts in preparation for childbearing, uh, but it also decreases the appetite. So when estrogen goes up, appetite actually goes down. So you see this through the menstrual cycle as you get closer and closer to ovulation, you see that the amount that women are eating tends to go down. And then in the luteal phase, as estrogen goes down, the progesterone goes up and the amount people eat goes up more. This is another study which tells you about the same thing, which is that during ovulation, your appetite goes down, people eat less, and then it goes up during the luteal phase. So estrogen has an effect to reduce the appetite and progesterone has the opposite. And of course, you see this with synthetic medroxyprogesterone, which is also called Megase. This is a, a drug that is often prescribed for people to stimulate the appetite. Uh, in cancer patients, for example, who are losing a lot of weight, they'll give this uh, medication, sometimes in kidney failure. So estrogen suppresses the appetite, progesterone increases the appetite. Now, the fascinating thing, which I had never seen before, but Lumen had shared it, uh, this research with me, is what type of fuel the body is using during the menstrual cycle. Um, the Lumen, as I've discuss discussed in a couple of previous video, is a small handheld device, and it measures the exhaled carbon dioxide. And why does this make a difference? It's because our body uses two types of fuel. It can either use glucose, which is carbohydrates, or it can use fat. And when you metabolize those two types of fuel, the amount of carbon dioxide released in your breath is different between the two. So by measuring the amount of carbon dioxide released per oxygen, you can get an idea of whether the body is burning fat or burning carbs. This article looked at the exhaled carbon dioxide during the menstrual cycle and also during menopause to get an idea of what happens to your body when you're going through these differences between estrogen and progesterone through the menstrual cycle. And what you can see is a very distinct two phases, just like we have the follicular and the luteal phase, what you can see is that all the way up to ovulation, where estrogen is going up, you can see that the amount of carbon dioxide is staying relatively high, which means that the body not only is eating fewer uh, total 
uh, calories because of the appetite suppressing effect, but it's tending to burn more carbs during that initial follicular phase. And then it switches. After ovulation, progesterone goes up, appetite goes up, and the body switches then to burning fat because you can see that the amount of exhaled carbon dioxide goes down. So what is the implication when you're trying to lose body fat? The follicular phase is probably the ideal phase to do it because you're getting this sort of double benefit. First, because hunger is going down, it's actually going to be easier to do the fasting. And second of all, because your body is tending to burn off the carbohydrates, you want to let it burn it off. So by doing fasting during the initial phase uh, or extended fast, you want to time it sort of into going into that ovulation period because remember that's when your hunger is going to be the lowest that's going to be the ideal time and this is uh, backed up by practical experience so megan ramos who runs the fastingmethod.com uh, who wrote the book Inter uh, intermittent fasting for women um, also didn't have access to this research when she was doing it but her practical experience with thousands of women told her that this first phase is probably the best phase in the uh, menstrual cycle. And now it's backed up her, uh, her, her clinical acumen with actual science uh, as measured by Lumen and also by the hunger uh, sensitivity with the estrogen and progesterone. During the second phase, the luteal phase, when you're having a high progesterone, you're going to have increased hunger, but also more fat burning. So this is probably the better time to be switching over to a low carbohydrate diet. Because your hunger is going to be higher, it's not going to be as easy to fast. So why do it when it's hard, when you can do it when it's easy? Because your body's already in this fat burning state, you want to keep it in this fat burning state and eating a ton of carbohydrates is going to switch you out of this fat burning state because your body's going to preferentially burn those carbohydrates. What about menopause? During menopause, uh, the, the cycle stops. And what happens is that both estrogen and progesterone start to rapidly decline. And this decline in estrogen is what causes the weight to redistribute. So remember that when uh, you undergo puberty, the estrogen causes the, the, the fat to, to go into the hips and the breasts, but underneath the skin. So that's the less dangerous type of fat. That's not the visceral fat, but the lower estrogen is going to push that back in. And remember that estrogen is going to suppress your appetite and therefore the lower estrogen is going to cause an increase in appetite and therefore an increase in weight. And uh, large scale studies show that perimenopause, the few years just around menopause, are actually one of the highest risk periods for women to gain weight. Average weight gain for women is 2.25 kilograms, which is close to five pounds. What Lumen did was they took women who are menopausal, but taking hormone replacement therapy, which mimics not being in menopause. So mimics the menstrual cycle. And compared that to women who are not taking hormone replacement therapy, and they looked for the difference. And what you can see here from these studies is that post-menopause, women tend to have much higher levels of carbon dioxide, which means they've switched from burning fat into burning sugar. And that explains again some of the problem that people have with peripenopausal weight gain. Not only is appetite going up because of the estrogen, but the switch from burning fat to burning carbohydrates, burning glucose, means if you're not burning fat, you're not getting rid of it. Super, super interesting data from Lumen, which is uh, explaining why there is a problem. And of course, Lumen is going to uh, be able to help you personalize some of this data. You can see what your baseline is and if it changes over time, you may need to change your diet in response to your changing hormones and that's called personalized medicine and that's why some of these things are so powerful. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.